Magnetic resonance imaging is designed to provide clinicians with versatile diagnostic imaging and treatment planning capabilities. It is an imaging tool used in many hospitals and imaging centers. This powerful technology requires operators and other personnel working with it to be aware of the associated safety hazards and take precautions to reduce these risks. This video presents the safety hazards associated with the gradient magnetic field. This video presents an introduction to the gradient magnetic field, the potential hazards of the gradient magnetic field, and the gradient safety precautions. Introduction to the gradient magnetic field. To locate the position of structures within the human body, each MR system applies switched gradient magnetic fields. These switching gradient fields are only active during scanning and do not extend outside the magnet. Every MRI system includes a set of three gradient coils. These gradient coils create the gradient magnetic fields used for the spatial encoding of the MR signal. The gradient fields are applied in three orthogonal directions to create different imaging planes. The gradient fields are switched on and off during scanning. The performance of the gradients is typically defined by two properties the amplitude of the gradient magnetic field, and the slew rate. The slew rate is the speed at which the gradients can reach the required amplitude. The time it takes to reach the required amplitude is called the rise time. Higher slew rates are louder and may result in more peripheral nerve stimulation. dB over dt is the ratio between the change in amplitude of the magnetic field, dB, and the time it takes to make that change, dt. dB over dt is measured in tesla per second, t slash s. High dB over dt may result in higher peripheral nerve stimulation. Implant manufacturers may specify the limiting dB over dt value for scanning an implant. Potential hazards. The hazards associated with the fast switching and high gradients are hearing damage due to acoustic noise, patient discomfort due to peripheral nerve stimulation, and the potential malfunction of active implants. Acoustic noise results from the rapidly switched electrical currents running through the gradient coils. This electromagnetic force is known as the Lorentz force. Since the gradient coils are not free to move, the sudden application of force results in the typical knocking sound during scanning. This knocking sound is louder for scans with high dB over dt values. The sound that is generated can approach acoustic noise levels high enough to cause discomfort or result in tinnitus or hearing damage. The predicted sound pressure level for each scan sequence is displayed in the user interface. The sound pressure level shows the number of decibels, dB, relative to the recommended maximum sound level. International MRI safety standards for patients allow a maximum sound level of 99 dBA for up to one hour. Hearing protection must be worn by the patient during scanning, as the system's acoustic noise can be experienced as uncomfortable and may exceed 99 dBA. Hearing protection must include appropriately fitted earplugs that provide sufficient sound damping of greater than 30 decibels. Additional use of the Philips headset is always recommended. The acoustic noise generated by the system is not only a hazard to the patient, but also affects anyone present in the examination room during scanning. Always provide hearing protection to anyone present in the examination room during scanning. Another effect of the high dB over dt values is peripheral nerve stimulation, PNS. PNS is caused by the rapid changes in gradient fields. This rapid change induces electric fields in the human body and can cause a tingling sensation or superficial twitching. PNS is unlikely to occur outside the imaging volume and is therefore generally only experienced by the patient. The location and nature of the PNS differs for each individual. 
not all patients will experience PNS. PNS is temporary. There are no known long-term health effects related to nerve stimulation. PNS is more likely to occur during scans that require rapid gradient switching, such as those used in diffusion imaging and fMRI. The expected PNS level can be viewed in the user interface. It is expressed as a percentage of the mean threshold level. For example, a PNS of 55% means there is a 55% chance that the patient will experience PNS. Scans with a high PNS can be identified by the warning icon. If the expected PNS level exceeds 80%, a warning message is displayed. The warning message displays the first time a scan with high PNS level is started. For patients with active medical devices, there is a risk of malfunction. Active medical devices such as pacemakers, deep brain stimulators, or an insulin pump contain an energy source such as a battery or have the ability to be inductively coupled. Exposure to the switching gradients may alter the performance of the device, leading to malfunction. Always follow the labeling instructions as specified by the vendor of the medical device and use ScanWise implant to restrict the system to these prescribed limits. Gradient safety precautions. Hearing protection in the form of appropriately fitted earplugs with sufficient damping greater than 30 decibels is required. Additional use of the Philips headset is recommended for maximum comfort. Take extra care to properly apply hearing protection to sedated patients and young children. For pediatric patients, the acoustic hood can be used to provide additional acoustic noise damping when the predicted sound pressure level exceeds the recommended maximum level of 99 decibels. For pediatric patients, a warning message displays. Always apply hearing protection to the patient and anyone else present in the examination room during scanning. After applying hearing protection, always check the fit and adjust if necessary. Options to reduce acoustic noise include Philips Soft Tone and Comfort Tone. These options adjust the gradient properties of the protocol to reduce acoustic noise. Comfort tone can be enabled for the whole examination, including the pre-scans. Soft tone must be set per protocol. These options are enabled on the contrast tab. Hearing protection is still required when using these acoustic noise-reducing options. Patients experience peripheral nerve stimulation differently. The location where it is felt and the physical effects will vary. PNS can cause a tingling sensation or superficial twitching. Some patients may report these sensations as painful. Often, it is experienced as discomfort. When experienced, PNS is temporary. For scans that may produce peripheral nerve stimulation, be aware of any scans that may have a high PNS level. This can be viewed in the scan dashboard. Instruct the patient to use the nurse call if they experience discomfort or pain. Maintain constant contact with the patient during the examination. Stop or pause the scan and attend to the patient if discomfort is reported. If signs of PNS are reported, such as tingling or a superficial twitch, lower the PNS mode to normal. For patients with implants and other medical devices, a qualified physician must evaluate the risks and benefits of the MRI examination before scanning. MR operators should understand and apply the specified DB over DT limits for devices. It is the obligation of the MRI operator to be aware of these conditions and to ensure that these conditions are strictly adhered to. Refer to the user documentation of the medical device or contact the device manufacturer to obtain the device-specific conditions. ScanWise implant software provides step-by-step -step guidance to enter the implant-specific values as specified by the implant manufacturer. In summary, 
The amplitude and fast switching of the MR gradients result in acoustic noise, the possibility of peripheral nerve stimulation, and the potential for malfunction of active medical devices. To avoid harm to the patient, the following precautions must always be taken. Always apply hearing protection for the patient and anyone in the examination room. Take extra care to properly apply hearing protection when scanning sedated patients or young children. Be aware of PNS and inform the patient about its potential effects. Understand and adhere to the MR conditions specified by the manufacturers of implants and other devices. And, as with all examinations, you should closely monitor the patient and instruct them to use the nurse call if they experience discomfort. This video highlights some of the essential guidelines for the safe operation of an MRI system. In addition to this, you must read and understand the chapter on safety in the instructions for use of the MRI system. If issues are not clear, please contact your local physicist or application specialist. Provided that the appropriate safety precautions as presented in the instructions for use are observed and the system is operated by qualified and trained personnel, MRI is a safe modality, producing images of outstanding clinical value.